Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Evidence and in today's video, I am going to show you how to calculate product in NumPy and Python and I'm going to compare it to calculating product in Python. So from the get-go before I move forward, I just want to let you know that NumPy has a non-safe counterpart and basically this allows you to compute the results while ignoring the non slash missing values. And for NumPy, to get the non-safe counterpart, you just do mp.nan, then before the operation. So for example, if you have percentile, normally you do mp.percentile. But to get um, the non-safe counterpart, you just do mp.nan percentile. In the data frame, data frame I'll be using today, there is no missing value, so I'm just going to skip this part. But I wanted to mention it so that you know it's available to you if you need to. So with that being said, let's go ahead and load our data frame. I already loaded my data frame earlier, but this is a preview of what the data frame looks like. And um, earlier in this notebook, I did import NumPy as NP. So how do you calculate the dot product in NumPy? In NumPy to calculate and the dot product you do np dot product and you pass in your data frame and really it is that simple it calculates the product for each single column right here so basically the product for year doesn't make sense it's just year so just ignore this but um, this is how you calculate the product for year. So you might have heard of numpy dot right here and numpy multiply function. Don't confuse it with numpy dot product. So basically how does numpy dot product works? The way it works is that if you have let's say for example six seven nine it will numpy dot product dot six times seven times nine and that's three seventy eight so it multiplies each element in an array across an axis. So it multiplies everything in the beer column against the whole column. It multiplies everything in the wine column, everything in the spirits column. So this is like the dot product of everything. This is like multiplication of every single thing in these columns right here. So what's like so what's the difference between let's say numpy dot product and numpy dot and numpy multiply well let's just look at this real quick if we do np dot dot and do parenthesis data frame it's going to throw an error because it's missing um, a second argument all right so the dot product is the dot product of two arrays specifically if both a and b are one d arrays it is inner product of vectors so for you to use the dot product you have to for you to use mp dot dot, you have to specify um two columns, um two arrays in this situation. So let's try it with year and um spirits. Why not? Now let's run this and see what we get. So basically, it 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 says I'm um, seventy one point five six. So it took everything in the beer column and then multiply it with the spirits column all right so basically that is um the one of the difference between dot product and mod and product so numpy dot product takes everything in the column and multiplies it against itself for dot product it um takes two arrays and multiply them together if we do mp dot multiply, let's see what we get. So if you do mp dot multiply, it's also different from mp dot dot. All right. So let's look at the documentation for mp dot multiply. So mp dot multiply does element wise multiplication. Okay. So it takes the first row from this column. And then takes the first row from this column and multiply them together, and this is what we get. And then it takes the first row from this column 
and multiply to the first I mean second row from this column and multiply to the second row from this column and this is what you get so I went ahead and put out my calculator just to show you what's going on here so if we take um, beer and spirit columns if we take 1.13 and multiply it by 0 0.74 that's what we get we got 0 0.8362 so if we scroll down here as you can see right and um, when you do um, numpy dot multiply for let's say this array which is this column and this array you get 0 0.8362 which is what we get here so numpy dot multiply does element wise multiplication which is basically taking like the first item, the first row in this item, and multiplied by the first row in this item. And that's basically uh, numpy.multiply. But then if you use numpy.product, which is what this video was originally about today, um, it will calculate the product of every single thing in this row. But I wanted to take the time to specify the difference between np.product, np.dot, and np.multiply. So with that being said, let's look at how you would calculate the equivalent of np.product using regular Python. How do you calculate product in Python? Now to calculate a product in Python, there is no easy, straightforward way to actually do it. Okay. So there are a couple of methods you could use. You could do something like um, import eta tools, and then um, you do eta tools dot product, and then parentheses. Let's say you pass in data frame. If you pass in something like data frame, it will just give you the object. If you want to um, actually get something out of it, you have to put it in a list. So you can do a list. And then if you just do your data frame it to give you the column names, which is not very useful. So here, let's just pass in something like beer, for example. And what it gives you is the Cartesian um, product. So it actually doesn't do the calculation. It just gives you the product between the things that you listed. So if I go ahead and add in an additional column here, let's say DF, something like spirits. As you can see, it gives you the individual values. All right, so, so what it does right here, it gives you the Cartesian value. So basically, if I go back up here, and look at beer and spirit the value allocated at index zero i mean at position zero is 1.13 and 0 0.74 so if you do enter to the product it gives you um those values in a tuple pairs back and then let's say you can write a for loop that actually does the calculations between um these two values to get the product, you can just do 1.13 times 0 0.74. So you can create a for loop to get this product, the product of these two values. And yes, you can have um, more than two data frames. So you can do something like DF and let's do wine, for example. So now it gives you the Cartesian product, like that's the product that's possible between um, these three columns right here so this is one way to get products and then manually write a for loop to give you um, the, this times this times this another way to let's say get a product just using pure python is something using math um, so you can do um, import math and do math dot product and then you pass in something like this And um, it will give you the product, but this is not gonna work here because I'm not using Python 3.8. So if you go to Python documentation here, it says that math.product is new in version 3.8. And right here in Google Golab, 
I'm not using Python 3.8. Okay, so if you want um, to do something like math.product, for example, you have to make sure you have you are using Python 3.8 in your environment because it's a is a function that's only available in version 3.8 and above. So these are kind of like two ways for you to let's say do product manually. I'm using Python. There's no easy, straightforward way to do product, just like you would uh, using NumPy. Now, even um, even if you're using Python 3.8 to do math it also has a start function and i'm gonna demonstrate this start function for you using numpy so basically what is start start is like where you want um, the calculation to start so if i go ahead and repeat what i did earlier which is numpy.product and i just pass in my data frame as you can see, it gives you the product um, for each column, right? But here, if I do numpy.product, data frame, and then comma, all right? I can specify the axis, and I'm going to show you that in a minute. But I can also specify something called initial, all right? So if we go ahead and do initial, and let's do equal to 10, and let's see what the result is going to be. And to tell us that initial is not supported in the pandas implementation of product. So to get around this, we are going to convert our data frame into a numpy array. So to do that, we highlight this and then we simply do mp.array and then we run this. But if we go ahead and specify the axis and say axis equal to zero. It, to give us the product of each column, but it's going to add 10 to it. So initially it starts at zero, but now instead of starting at zero, it's going to start at 10. Okay, so basically um, for the Osprey's column, you know, um, instead of 9.4 times 10 to the 25, it's going to be 9.4 times 10 to the 26 you know because we are starting at 10 right now instead of starting at the initial value for that particular column now the last thing i wanted to show you is that you could also do numpy product but you can do it for um, rows if i go ahead and do this and do axis equal to zero it will give me the exact same value as this one that's because axis equal to zero is kind of like the default but if i wanted to get the product information but for each row um i have to specify axis equal to one if i go ahead and specify axis equal to one here as you can see instead of giving us the product for each column it gives us the product for each row that's it for this video. To get access to this notebook that I use in today's video, just go to machinelearningeducation.com and once you are here, you can click on free data science resources and it will get you to this page. So this is where I keep all my data science resources. I create a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of blog posts and I end up with a lot of notebooks. And I just find it easier and more straightforward to take all those resources and put it under one platform. So go to machinelearningeducation.com to get access to the notebook that I use in today's video and to get access to all my other resources. And also you can visit me online at evidencen.com. This is my primary website where I have my data science blogs. And as time goes by, I'm going to add more and more stuff to my data science blogs. And once you are here, you can also click on uh, free data science resources and to be able to get you to this page. That's it for this video. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. If you made it this far in this video, but you didn't like it, please give it a double thumbs down and still subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye.